Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here, as always, is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we have a special guest, a viewer favorite. It is a chat conversation with Freddie Mercury from the afterlife. So, my friend, Freddie Mercury, come on in and let's have a conversation and connection today. Are you ready for Freddie? Oh yeah, I bet you are. Hey, I wanted to give a shout out, Freddie, to um, a, one of my clients who is such a huge fan of yours, and I have several clients who are actually, but I talked with her today, and she is the reminder for me to do this session with you. So thank you, you know who you are, for the reminder to do that, and thank you for showing up in the session to remind me to do that, because that's what he did. He literally came into the session and was like, hey, Bridget, hey, we haven't talked for a while, it's a good time to talk, so this uh, conversation is long overdue. All right, Freddie, so there's so much going on in the world, I can't not smile. You guys, I cannot smile. Can you feel that energy? It instantly makes me feel good, happy, joyous. Oh, Freddie, joyous energy. He has such joyous energy. Open your hearts, you guys. Feel in the heart space. Feel the connection. Feel his energy vibe. Come on in. Oh, such a lovely energy. Such a lovely. I just, I can't stop smiling like it hurts my cheeks. <laughs> it's awesome. Thank you for being here. We need some cheering up. He says, you do. Yes, you, yes, you do, he says. You in America, especially you in America, you are really messing things up quite a bit, aren't you? Yes, we are. We are messing things up quite a bit. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Well, you always did do your own thing and go your own way. And you do tend to let things go a bit too long. And so then things become overdue and... It's about time then to um, make adjustments, a course correction. <laughs> okay, Freddie, thank you for that introduction. Can we talk about current events? Can, we, can you give us some insight, some hope into, we have two major things that are, that are really forefront. One is a health crisis, a global health crisis, and a health scare, let's say that, because you guys, it's scary, right? And then we have civil unrest and a, a rising up of uh, an incredible opportunity for awareness on a long-standing civil rights issue and to address and work through and deal with racism. And so that's a lot, you guys. It's a lot on the agenda. So, Freddie, come on. Can you give us some hope? Give us some insight? Give us anything? Not a song, because I can't sing. I'm not going to translate your singing because I'm not good at that. He says, yes, what are you going to do? About, what are you going to do about that? What are your plans, Bridget, moving forward? He's asking me what my plans are moving forward in relation to like diversity is what it feels like. Hmm. Yeah, I wasn't really planning on talking about that in a public forum, about the fact that when I channel, he's talking about, he's alluding to the fact that I've been really having some deep conversations with some people that are very close to me about channeling and about doing it in a way that's appropriate and respectful to people of diverse cultures and backgrounds. And whether that be me incredibly butcher, butchering a dialect or feeling and taking on the energy of another, of an energy vibration of a spirit and sharing it, how it comes through me, which is limited in my own filters how to now moving ahead, looking ahead, how could I and should I even be channeling in that way or format? So there's a lot that I've been, yes, you raise, you really go right to the heart of the matter, don't you? Mm -hmm. I haven't made any kind of long-standing decisions or determination about that. I, I do know that I'm in a place where I'm educating myself and being open and yet I don't want to be afraid to do things either because you know to do my work to share my work so it's 
it's a difficult time to really know what's appropriate as far as my lens, the way I see the world, the way I've been raised and in the limited viewpoint that I have and the view that I have. And so, um, yeah. Thanks for like bringing that right out into the open, Freddie, just bringing all that right out into the open. I'm sure that many of you have struggled with some of these questions yourself too, haven't you? Like thought about really well, how am I? Am I disrespectful? Like, am I ignorant? How am, not am I? Because I think the answer to that is yes, we all are in some way, shape or form. And in, for some of us, we're overachievers in that area. <laughs> many ways are we ignorant. And to acknowledge that we don't know how we're ignorant, that we have to be willing to look at that is I think a really important first step. So I'm at that place. And so, yeah, that was tough. Okay, that's really awkward, Freddie. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, I, I would like, I, I did say insights, but I was hoping the viewers could get encouragement here. Okay, so do you have any kind of encouragement? Can you sprinkle some of your um, fantastic glitter power over all of us? What do you have for us as far as hope goes? He says, well, the children, we can always look to the children, the next generation, that might be where you have to put your uh, eggs, that's what they say, your eggs in one basket. And he kind of laughs like, <laughs> like, that's funny, right? You get it, it's a joke. Uh, okay. And uh, so the next generation, the future generation, oh, I said, hmm. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh my. some clearing, <laughs> communication channel clearing. Maybe the reason why we're going through this collectively here and now, all of this, all, everything, all the upheaval, all the major change and shift and turning us on our head, all the structures and systems and things, is so that our children don't have to suffer through it or for it. Perhaps that's the reason or the bigger purpose here. He says, you won't know until you get there. And there's a long ways away. He says, long ways away. So there'll be much music written about this in these times. There are young people now who are discovering themselves and their voice and becoming part of a revolution. And that is a major movement. That's a major movement. And there'll be a lot of music written about this, these times that you're in. A lot a lot put into the new history books about it. So Freddie, are other countries dealing with this and, and working through this? I know everybody's working through like the, the health stuff, the health crisis in different ways and the, the challenges of racism and things in, in different ways too. But is everybody like, we're not all on the same playing field. Like we're not all experiencing it the same way. Is it because different cultures, different parts of the world are impacted differently? What, there's a lot of change going on. Is it happening everywhere? I guess is my question. Like really happening everywhere. Not just what we see in the news, you guys, but really happening. He says, oh, oh long overdue under the surface. A lot has been eroding. He said, there's a lot of erosion under the surface. And there's been so much cry for change, so much really desperation for, for change and it's happening. It's happening now. The destruction and the deconstruction is, is, is a state that is so challenging. It's so challenging. He says, I don't envy you. I don't envy you. And then he says, oh geez, I wish, see this is an example of how I've been not wanting to channel and this is partly why, because Freddie just literally said, I heard, it's like with the gays, he says which to me seems derogatory or disrespectful or rude coming from me, a straight white woman. But he literally says, well, you know, the gays, it's like with the gays. He says, and we're still working on that, aren't you? You're still dealing with that. Everybody can't just marry whoever they want. It's not just completely acceptable. People still make those comments under their breath and they look with judging eyes there's still that you still you still have that so has is it really done is it really clear is it really over no it's not it's a 
and he's showing me like a cycle. And I use that word a lot, you guys. I've been using the word cycle. It's a cycle in my sessions, in my, in my group work, in my private session work. I've been using the term cycle, cycle. So he literally shows me a cycle, like literally in a wash cycle. Like we're working it through, we're working it through, we're working it through, we're breaking up the dirt, we're breaking up the dirt, we're getting rid of the crap, we're, we're trying to clean things up, we're trying to clean things up. But there's a spinny process, which makes you dizzy and crazy and not sure what to do and you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't and if you say nothing you're in trouble and if you say something you're in trouble and if you can please some of the people some of the time and you gotta stop worrying he says you gotta stop worrying about what other people think and you gotta focus on yourself what do you what does your family need if you got if you have health concerns this is freddie you guys if you have health concerns then stay home take care of yourself as best you can don't go out. Don't feel pressure to go out to do all the things. Say no. Say no to the request for dinner. Although you would love to go, just say no. Ensure your safety. Ensure your health. Take care of, tender care of your wellness. It's a very important time for that, especially during a complete overhaul of your belief system and your structures and your change that is coming on the heels of the health crisis. It's not an accident, Freddie says. It's not an accident that's happening in this timing. It is intentional, quite intentional, and an alignment of the universe in order to really, really ensure that deep change will be rooted in. Now, some of the changes will be radical and actually reverse, in some ways, the progress that has been made to this point. But now this is a new stretch of time. He's literally showing me a new band of time. Just like the civil rights movement in the 60s, it's like a new band of time here. And it's stretching, and the stretching process is difficult. The stretching process is painful and uncomfortable and hurts. And some people go too far, and it creates more pain for everybody else in the middle. It's not to be to the extremes. The change must be gradual, but it must be consistent. And there's a fear, he says, there's a fear everywhere that if you don't do it now, it's not gonna happen. And that is false, false, false. He's like, that is just false. That is false. That is a complete misrepresentation of the entire point of all of this. You have time, you have nothing but time. And it's a good thing because progress, it, it does take time. And the fact that human beings are less than patient does not serve you very well during this time. And it's not that you're being forced to learn to be patient. That is completely unrealistic. You get so bored so easily. We all do. You must have outlets for expression, for creativity, for connection and socialization. And yet at the same time, if you're always arguing with each other or being angry with one another or fighting in the streets, rallying or protesting, it doesn't matter whatever you call it, it is a form of being social and being connected. And that is what has been missing during the time of that global health crisis is the separation and the isolation. And that's creating the increased potential for massive change, like toppling over it. Like he's showing me something like this and then it's like this. So, so will there be good? There'll be good that's come of this. There already has been. Yes, yes, yes. After things settle down a little bit, he says, yes, yes. And things will, will they? Will they really though? Or is there another wave? There is another wave of change. It looks like there's another wave. He's showing me another wave and it looks like changes in the educational system, which I predicted already. Well, I don't know if I ever actually really shared that here. I'm going to share that on Fairy Grasshopper, which is my psychic life vlogging channel, which I just talk about all my psychic life stuff and life stuff and psychic stuff and psychic stuff and life stuff there. Um, but that education is one of those major systems that is going to go through uh, restructuring besides the economy, which we're already seeing, um, as a result of the health crisis. The health crisis then the next pillar was the economy, which we haven't fully experienced, expressed, or seen yet. And there's going to be, I think, some waves of it. There'll be some waves coming forward, and another wave coming forward, another wave coming forward. The good news, you guys, is that it doesn't feel like it's overhead. It feels like it's here, which is manageable, because here is communication and connection. So as long as we can stay connected and in a hopeful energy, 
vibration, we can move through whatever changes are taking place, even if it means job loss, even if it means we have to move into a different home or live with some family or relatives or make some different and sometimes very major changes. We can get through this, we meaning you and you and you and you and you over there, you, you right there, yeah, you and me also, okay? But education was one of those other pillars that I could see. So the health, I saw the economy, and then I saw the educational system. And But the educational, and I think actually maybe now that I'm thinking about this, I think I've shared this in private sessions earlier on, especially early on in the health crisis where there was stay-at-home orders. I think that some of the conversations I was having with people who were very psychic were really feeling a lot of this stuff, like all this stuff is changing. It's not just this one area. It's all these others that are coming and changing too. I'm like, yes, but it's okay because we already are used to a change. And so it's a cycle, it's a cycle, it's a cycle. So the education system has to change, which we've already seen. So there you go. So the education system is going to change. Mm -hmm. It already has. It's begun. The way that you work has changed. It's already being passed along. He says it's already being passed down to another generation. The generation that's used to the technology. The generation that used to complain about their screen time and their video time and their best friends are all online on discords and chat, chat, chats and things like that in video games and not real friends face to face. And it turns out that that's exactly what is needed during this next evolution of education, of economics, of all of it. Mm. He has a very good point. This is kind of serious, Freddie. I was hoping for some lighthearted fun. This is kind of serious. And you're actually making me warm, like it's hot. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm hot. I have my workout stuff on still, you guys. And I came into the, the back room here to do the session because it's been so long since I've had a session. Don't worry, this is my workout stuff, my workout clothes. Did a good walk today, so. Actually, I have this shirt on. I'm gonna show you guys my shirt. Live with intention. Check it out. Live with intention. Oh yeah. Um, okay. So anyway, how you like that, Freddie? You like that? Yes, I like that. Yes, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. He said it's important to take care of yourself. You should. He says with all that extra energy, there's so much extra. There's so much extra. Do something with it that's productive. Do do something with it. Do something with it that's productive. But do not. Do not. He says. Try to not uh, compare yourself to other people, though, because that will never help you. You you can't you can't compare yourself to others because when you do, you only feel you only get misery. Freddie says you only get misery. You only you only get misery. It's just, it's miserable. It's miserable. Compare yourself to yourself. What you did yesterday. What you did today. <laughs> oh, Freddie. All right. I am a little sunburned, I think, today. I was outside. I'm so grateful for the sunny weather. I love the sunny weather. It's gorgeous. It is. He said, it is. It is nice. It's really nice. He says, you would like Europe during this time of year. You would love Europe during this time of year. I've never been to Europe. Like, I've never been to Germany. I've never been to France, Italy, England, UK. In fact, I put UK on my bucket list. I made a bucket list. And going to London is one of my things in the bucket list. You would like it. He says, you would like it. It's a very city. It's very metropolitan urban, but it has this, this really rich history that you would really enjoy, Bridget. He says, you would really enjoy the history, the rich history. I think so. I think so. I think I would, yes. I think I would. At some point, I will do that. I will visit. I'm certain of it. I'm certain. So is there anything, Freddie, here as we're connecting in June of 2020 that you would like to share? Mm -hmm. There's definitely always a reason to celebrate, he says. There's always a reason to celebrate. It's actually Pride Month here, so happy Pride Month. I feel really connected to Pride and um, feel as though it's kind of my job, the torch has been passed to me to make sure that I celebrate that so that people can love who they want to love and be loved who they want to love, hopefully without judgment and it would be lovely if eventually every state in the United States of America would allow for couples to marry regardless of what they look like, what their gender is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I feel like I kind of, that's part of like the legacy that my dad left and almost like I'm carrying on the torch kind of like being able to 
speak up and say, hey, love is love, right? Mm. So what would it have been like for you? Would you have gotten married, Freddie? Do you think you would? I think I have asked you this before, but would you have gotten married? No, he says, no. No, I don't think so. He says, no, I, I don't think so. I'm not the marrying kind. I would like to be coupled up and settled down, but I don't know. I can't see myself as a marrying kind. I can't really see myself as a husband. I really can't see that. Maybe in another lifetime, would you do that? Oh, yes. A traditional family, husband and wife and three children, a dog and many cats, of course. Yes, perhaps that. But mm, that does seem kind of boring at times, though. The whole like, traditional concept doesn't really maybe fit. Maybe eventually. Maybe when I want a, a break of sorts, I would do that. A break? Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, it's crazy to have oh life, family, kids. Oh, busy, 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 busy. He says, you are, you are very busy. He says, I have watched you doing the whole, um, the online school thing. It's, it has been quite a challenge for you, hasn't it? <laughs> yes, thanks. Thanks for putting all my stuff out there. Thank you so much for that. See, this now, this is what, this... Do I really need to be channeling him right now? Oh, he's not that sassy. He's a little pokey, a little poke in front of me, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I'm okay with that. All right, you guys. Hey, thanks, Freddie, for showing up today and for spreading some of your joy and your cheerful energy and some of your insights. Wow, about current events and things of that nature and for exposing all of my thoughts and the things that you and I talk about right here publicly on YouTube because, you know, why not? Why not just put it all out there? <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm Bridget. It is my pleasure to be able to host here at Above Life Channel. Every week I share a channeling session with an afterlife guest, a celebrity, and we do that to inspire your spirit to fill you with hope so that you have the encouragement to live your life, your best life. It's your life after all, so live it. Just live it. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you check out all the playlists. There is a Freddie Mercury playlist with a whole bunch of binge-worthy content there. Make sure you subscribe to Above Life channel on YouTube. And if you're interested in knowing more about me and my psychic life, check out Fairy Grasshopper channel, which is my psychic and vlogging channel. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.